Good afternoon, good day, or whatever time of day it is that you're watching. Good evening, who knows? I am Marty with Ask the Alumni, and I have a special guest with me. I've got Lynn Brown, who is an alumni with me at the University of Phoenix. Hi, Lynn. Hello. And as I've been saying, uh, we're gonna. I'm actually gonna just tell the truth that uh, this is to be live, but for some reason, Facebook is like uh, maybe they're on vacation or something. I don't know why, but I tried for a while to get live today, and they just weren't playing it. So this is a recording, and it's even better because normally when I do these, I do them in our private group for uh, University of Phoenix. But uh, Lim was wanting to play this for some of her friends and some of her coworkers and some of the volunteers at uh, her organization. So I'm gonna put this on my on my feed and share the link and uh, that way a lot of folks can see it. So Lynn, uh, why don't you tell us where you're from? From, I am from Portland, Oregon. You're so. from Portland, Oregon. Okay, yeah. you've been here for how long? Uh, I have web feet. I've been here all my life. You're a native. I am. Get out of here, okay. Yeah. That's good to know. We are a unicorn. <laughs> good to know. Okay, and so now you went to University of Phoenix for, you've got, how, when did you go to university? I went there in 2003. So it's been a long time ago for me. I got my master's to them. When did you go to University of Phoenix? So I have three degrees from University of Phoenix. I have my associates that I in 2012, my bachelor's in 2013, and my master's in 2018. Okay, very nice. So right. we're also going to talk about all the letters that you work for as a volunteer, because that's where we'll really kick this off. As yeah. I said, folks, you know, um, we're both, Lynn and I, we're both in a group. It's an alumni group for the University of Phoenix. I just happen to be the president of the group. Um, by default, <laughs> I, I met with, uh, uh, with, uh, with Chris. He's uh, one of the uh, marketers for the uh, University of Phoenix, also an alumni. And I said, what happened to the chapter here? What's going on? He said, well, you want to be president? I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> so here I am. And so we started doing these meet and greets with some of the from some of the uh, alumni, and um, we have a chapter. We have like a little group, and I said I want to start talking to folks. And then we have a little get together coming up next week. And unfortunately, Lynn has some. Well, not unfortunately. Fortunately for her, but unfortunately for me, because I don't get to meet her. But she's got a um, a, vo a volunteer thing that she's doing that uh, she does quite a bit. And she threw a bunch of letters at me. I had no clue what they meant. And it's USATF. I'm like, what is that? So I Googled it and looked it up. I'm like, that's cool. So will you tell us about the USATF of Oregon? It's not United all States. tobacco and firearms. I, I, <laughs> that's what I thought initially. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it, it's funny because it is USA Track and Field of Oregon. Um, I have my little banners that I put on my car and I've been driving around and they said, hey, you're with the ATF. And I said, absolutely, I'm not. And so USA Track and Field of Oregon, we're the local organization or association that works with individuals in our area to help promote the sport of USA Track and Field on the national level. So I'm the direct contact for membership and to make sure that people are in compliance as far as making sure that they're safe for working with youth athletes. And what that means is that a person that's interested in having a club or um, working with youth athletes as a coach will need to be three-step compliant. And so that just means having a membership background check in safe sport. A lot of our individuals are older and we're looking at recruiting younger officials to get them out there working with the kids. And so one of the things that I find is that people need help navigating the system of how to get through. And that's where they contact me and help them to get on that level. We have- When you say, when you say navigate the system, you mean like the computer system and all that? Okay. Yes. okay. Come, somebody walking into USA Track and Field as a different aspect, like they're used to doing uh, AAU or football or soccer or anything else to that nature coming into USATF, it's a new starting point. How do I do this? I want to be certified as a coach. Can I do that? Yes, you can. And so I'll get them connected with coaches education. 
So that way they can complete the trainings and actually be listed as a certified coach. Um, it's one of the things that I also do. I hold a lot of hats within our association. Do, do you, um, do you, do I, was, I was about to ask, does your position come with like its own hat rack? I mean, I'm thinking. <laughs> and, you know, and that's the funny thing, because my boss within the association as the president, every time a new position is created, some kind of way it ends up on my hat rack instead of just somebody else <laughs> within the association. So you're yes, there. you're right. You're it's like it rolls right back to you. <laughs> right. Every time something's created. <laughs> I thought I'd pull up your website too. While we're Absolutely. There. So no, something I saw. So it, it's everybody, which is great. And you were saying it's more seniors now, right? More older folks. Right this Perfect. moment. Okay. So tomorrow, mm -hmm. tomorrow we're hosting a master's and open track meet. So anyone over the age of 14 that's interested in competing in race walk, if you scroll down on that page. Oh, I just, I was actually oh, going right there, calendar. right there. Oh. If you, that first thing with the older people. Oh, right here. Yeah. That's our okay. master's meet that's being hosted tomorrow. It will be at Rex Putnam High School in Milwaukee, Oregon. Okay. Um, it is a championship meet, so they'll they'll have opportunities to compete at the um, race walk, different field events. Are they throwing a shot put, javelin, discus? Um, are they looking to do some jumping, long jumps? They're welcome to come out and compete. We'll even have some running events as well during that meet. Mm -hmm. See, and this is actually nice to hear. I mean, I wasn't even thinking um, older or seniors or anything like that at all. I was thinking when you were saying track and field, I'm thinking, okay, so it's kids, you know, teenagers, college age. Okay. We have, we have aspects for membership for everyone that will be at least seven by December 31st of the competition year. Mm -hmm. And there is no maximum age. Wow. There, there's a group. So for our youth athletes, they're at least seven by December 31st of the competition year. Okay. And as long as they're younger than the age of 18, by this year, it will be July 30th. They're eligible to compete as a youth athlete. And that kind of gives you right there down that little in the disciplines Okay. The different the different things as far as the cross country race walk, mountain ultra trail or mutt, road running, long distance or long distance running is the LDR. Yeah, that I um, wouldn't do that one unless there's like somebody bring me back. <laughs> I'm not even too big on the cross country only because whew, that's a lot of running. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I can definitely get out there and coach them and and officiate those meets, and I am out there with the youth. Mm -hmm. Um. For our open athletes, those typically go from age 14 until the age of 35. And at 35, an athlete can transfer their membership into a master's athlete, and they have those accessibilities to compete in, in different master meets. Okay. Yeah. So basically, this is just, I don't want to say basic, that's a little wrong word to use. I hate using basic what this really is, is an ability or an opportunity for people to stay active in sport and, comp and competition, right? Is that, is that? Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. Okay. So how did you get involved in it? <laughs> the way I actually got involved, uh, probably about 2012, I was looking for something to get my son active in, in different sporting events. We had already done football. We did wrestling. Somebody recommended Albina Sports Program to me mm -hmm. for him to participate. And just, I'm a parent that gives back that when I'm signing my son up, I'm there and I'm active. And so I started off. You, know, you, don't, you don't just drop him off and say, see you later. That's my mom. That's I'm, how she yeah. wanted it. She never yeah. came <laughs> anything. He would just drop me off and he's gone. There's there's some parents that do that. There's some parents that do that don't have the time availability to do that. And so it was helpful. I was working on on my first degree, going to school. You know, I can take him to practice. I can do schoolwork while I'm sitting at the field in the park. I can also do administrative tasks for the club. And so they they welcomed that and they were very appreciative that 
in September of that year, our head coach was like, hey, have you considered of looking at positions along the association level, which I started working with the youth as their secretary. And with the secretary position for the youth, they asked me after several months of, hey, we need a membership chair, somebody that can help work with membership across all ages in the Oregon Association, not just youth. And so I've just been expanding my, yeah, my career say, so from there. You have like one of those name plates on your desk that just kind of keeps getting longer. And <laughs> no. desk. I mean, literally you just work from home or work from where you can set up a computer or a laptop. Is that how but, work goes for you pretty much? That's how it is. Yeah, I definitely, when I'm out and about, wherever there's a computer, if I know that I'm going to be at the field at a track meet, I take a laptop with me. Somebody needs assistance with setting up a membership. They can definitely, I can help them with that process. Um, so yeah, we don't, our our office is a PO box in Tualatin. Okay. <laughs> versus <laughs> my number is is the number. So wherever I'm at with my phone is where people find information about Oregon. I receive a bunch of calls here lately, especially as we're preparing for Junior Olympics, as you can tell by my background. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm getting calls nationally of, hey, can you help me with my membership? And unfortunately I cannot because I can only access information in Oregon. Okay. Now you had, I'm going to pull this up really quick because I tell you folks, I, whenever I do these, I try to get people to send me pictures as soon as they can so I can do a little bit of promotion before. Um, but you sent me this like last night. So I did. But I'm actually really curious because this is a cool picture and I want to know the story behind it. So absolutely. Let's see. I'm on my share screen. Where is it? It's photos. Um, okay. Share. Boop. That one, right? Yes. So that is me. <laughs> what is the story behind that picture? Story behind that picture is I was on the fence about did I want to attend master's graduation? The reason I was on the fence about attending master's graduation is because they had just closed the local chapters of University of Phoenix the campuses. So there would not be a graduation in Oregon. Okay. So I'm like, is my family going to be willing to drive up to Kent and, and watch me participate in the master's graduation? I only had a confirmation of a couple of people and then found out that we would be hosting our association youth meet that same day. So association youth meet is the first step in the qualifying for the championship series for athletes to be eligible to attend National Junior Olympics. So it was a no-brainer for me. I right. showed up in my in my cab. I wasn't gonna wear, you know, I'm all over the field. So um that makes sense. You were you were so you were there represent. Yes. That's great. <laughs> it was a lot of people accused me of of because my son graduated that same year also. Oh. So they thought it was his cap that I was wearing. <laughs> so nope, today is my master's graduation. And since I'm here cheering on the kids and hosting the meet, this is where I'm at. Yeah, I actually went to, uh, back in the day, way back when, um, I actually went to Phoenix because um, I was going, mine was 100% online. So I started in Denver. Actually, it was Aurora, so South Denver, and then I was living in rural Utah, finishing up my master's before I got the job being a farmer rep, and I ended up uh, going to Phoenix for the graduation. It was kind of special. It was like the first time that my mother and my father were in the same room, and they were cordial with each other, so that was kind of odd, I guess, since <laughs> that was kind of interesting for me. Um, and I had my, my brand new daughter and all this other stuff. So it was kind of a special day for me too. So sure. that's it. Yeah. So, well, very I cool. All of my graduations, my family definitely all showed up in force at the Memorial Coliseum in Portland, but then it was like, oh, you guys want us to go to Kent. And then it was like, yeah, this meet is pretty important. And I host a major part of this meet. So yes, that's awesome. 
Yeah. So tell me a little bit more here about your burning desire. My burning desire, my burning desire. I'm a helper. I'm a helper. So I'm always the one that's out helping others, doing other things. Currently, I'm in school for a different school, mm -hmm. working on my certified alcohol and drug counseling certificate. So that mm -hmm. way I can still provide additional supports along the mental health realm. And so, um, I here have your contact information. I'll make sure I'll put this in the notes and everything. When I do get this posted, I'll have all your contact information. But you have an email, an, an email there. And this yeah. is not your personal phone number, I take it. This that is, is the, the USATF <laughs> Oregon phone. <laughs> okay, great. And uh, I'll put all the other information on there as well. We don't have to repeat it here. So it'll be a nice big graphic there for you or just the post itself. Um, anything else you'd like to share before I go, before we go? I really can't think of anything else. Okay. Well, yeah. thank you for being on. But before you do go, since I'm doing my old format of recording, you get to get stuck with three questions. Okay. <laughs> I spent all of no time preparing for this. I used to like, I had a book of 200 questions, but since I moved out of my old house where I was sharing, um, I haven't been able to find the book. So I just go when I'm talking now and I just pulled up a bunch of questions. I'm gonna ask you three questions from this list that I prepared within 30 seconds of pulling it up. Okay. Uh, let's see. Question number one. What is your favorite line from a movie? And what is the movie? Oh my goodness, I have too many favorite lines of a movie. And I don't know why Oprah Winfrey in Color Purple is the first thing that popped into my head if you okay. told Arco to beat me. <laughs> Wait, say it again, what is it? You told Harpo, Harpo to beat, beat me? me. <laughs> you told Harpo to beat me. <laughs> and I don't know why that was- He was angry? Line. Oh, I remember that. Oprah was angry in that scene. Uh, let's see. If you were arrested, what would it be for? Shh. I can't talk about that. Because can't talk about being arrested. Okay, moving on to the next. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. If, if you had to eat the same meal at least once a day, what would it be? Same meal once a day day it would have to be drunken noodles with chicken pad su -u. okay okay and last question this is a very important one to me personally is a hot dog a sandwich it can be a sandwich yes how because it's bread folded together with meat in the middle with condiments included some people also add vegetables to it Yes. Okay. <laughs> well said, well played, well displayed. Okay. I'm not going to argue with you. You've got a very good point. You did, you explained your point very well. I'm going to go with your point and say well played. <laughs> but I want to thank you again for being on with me, Lynn. I hope you had a good time. Even despite our technical difficulties. I mean, they were crazy. I don't know what to say about that, but they happen. So thanks for being on this, this day of Ask the Alumni. Yes, okay. Thank you for inviting us. You bet. Have a great day. Take care. Thank you. Me too.